In 2014, Legendary released their first entry in the modern American Godzilla series with a film directed by Gareth Edwards starring Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Cranston, Ken Watanabe, and Elizabeth Olsen. That movie would go on to make over $500 million at the box office and was considered a big comeback for Godzilla in America at the time. But with this newfound success, Toho, the original company responsible for the Japanese Godzilla films, decided to resurrect the monster themselves, this being the first movie they'd made of him since 2004's Final Wars, and the result was a film that not only took Godzilla back to his serious roots, but one that was a huge critical success and won loads of awards when it came out. Shin Godzilla, also known as Godzilla Resurgence, is a 2016 science fiction monster movie directed by Hideki Anno and Shinji Higuchi. The movie tells the story of a gigantic amphibious creature that rises up from the depths and begins evolving into a more formidable beast over the course of its story. Both the Japanese and United States military forces try to stop the monster, but over the course of the film, they find out that it's going to take a lot of effort and diplomatic teamwork in order to stop it. The movie being a critique of bureaucratic red tape and governments pacing the rooms before doing anything to help solve a problem that would help its people. It's a movie that is pretty smart in almost every way imaginable. So in one of my previous videos I mentioned that King Kong was the reason the initial Showa Godzilla series wound up becoming more silly instead of serious and the reason I think that mainly happened is due to King Kong vs. Godzilla becoming such a gigantic hit that the sequel simply followed suit and began doing more of what that film did to make more money. Of course this also meant that the series wound up catering to younger audiences, which is usually what people say the reason for that flip was in the first place. And while I agree, I really do think without the influence of Kong, and possibly even Son of Kong, which there's no way Toho didn't look at for inspiration, the Godzilla brand would never have gotten to those outlandish heights so quickly. I know that there's other political ramifications that were going on in Japan at the time, specifically with what kinds of movies they were making and who they wanted to target with, you know, those films, but I really I really believe that King Kong vs. Godzilla is what changed Godzilla forever. And after those films came out, the ones that followed it, Toho rebooted the brand with the return of Godzilla, which I've also done a video on. And way on down the line, we got reboot number 5,007 with this live action Japanese movie. Now when this thing came out, I was beyond excited, man. I've seen every Godzilla movie in theaters that's come out in America, starting with the 1998 remake starring Matthew Broderick, and this was a movie that I definitely definitely didn't want to miss. At the time, everyone was into the changing political landscape that would result from the eventual presidential election, and a movie like this being so critical of its government while also showing the younger generation step up in order to take down a global threat was pretty topical subject matter. Of course, not too many people even knew this movie was in theaters because it was a Japanese Godzilla film, and when I went to see it, barely anyone else was in the room with me, but man did I have a blast because this was one of the first Godzilla movies in a long time that I actually felt the filmmakers were taking the monster seriously again and it really went a long way for me. So starting off with Godzilla himself, much like the 1998 remake and some of the newer stuff that has come out since, the monster got a radical redesign. Only this time, instead of the creature being made as a modern dinosaurian theropod with a more grounded moveset, he was turned into an amphibious-like creature that slowly transformed into something similar to the old school Godzilla we've all grown to know and love. Of course, there were other massive changes to the monster too. This time, instead of featuring nuclear breath, Godzilla comes complete with a napalm-like exhaust that flows out of its mouth, and when he's ready to get serious, the monster detaches its lower jaw like some kind of snake or predator monster before letting loose a purple laser beam that cuts through everything in existence. Later on, the United States military finds out that his dorsal spines are vulnerable to firepower, and after making the monster bleed, he adapts by shooting the same laser beams out of his back. Talk about a drastic change to the monster's abilities. Now what I like the most about Shin Godzilla gets boiled down to three little things. One, 
The monster's no longer treated like this indestructible superpower that humans can't afflict any damage to. Whenever people do that in Godzilla movies, it just doesn't sit right with me because they were able to kill the monster in the 1954 original, and the whole message with that plot point was that humans can be overly destructive and weaponization of science is wrong. So seeing Godzilla bleed and get defeated is always welcome in my books no matter what anyone says. I know that's controversial, but I don't care. Now, number two. I really like the fact that this movie goes into detail with the characters' struggle to take down Godzilla in a changing political landscape. This movie is a pretty good critique of the failings of modern politics and the way in which the humans grow and deal with stress, as well as step up to the plate when it comes to defending their country, is really great stuff as far as I'm concerned, and it's uniquely Japan and Japanese in every way imaginable. I really enjoyed it. I'll get more into that later, but the third reason this movie works so well for me is actually what they were able to bring to the table that was fresh and original. I know that some people hated the drastic redesigns and transformations Godzilla has here, but I think that the concept of the monster constantly evolving in order to adapt and take out its enemies is extremely cool. I especially like the bizarre ending where, no joke, Godzilla is shown to have been in the process of evolving into several tiny xenomorph-like Godzilla creatures before he was defeated. That's the kind of wild and crazy insane ideas that I'm really into. Now, as far as the human characters go, like I said, they do a really good job at making the movie relatable and modern for a global audience. I think the dynamic between the Japanese and American teams worked out the best and really helped sell the idea of a threat that was being dealt with by both nations. And again, for the time in which it was coming out, I think it really spoke to a lot of us who were fed up of the overly bureaucratic and whack handling of government. Bomber 2 and Bomber 3 will circle in from behind. Payback time. Roger. This was a very different Godzilla movie, and one that I personally found to be extremely fun. I loved Hiroki Hasegawa and Satomi Ishihara in the movie especially, and their dynamic and banter, it's super endearing. This is a fun movie to watch, and it's not cheesy, outlandish, or crazy. I like those Godzilla movies too, but this one, serious, modern, original, great. Now, speaking of the monster himself, Shin Godzilla did surprise me a lot with that radical redesign and nature in which the creature was presented to the audience, because one of the things I noticed people defending immediately before the film even came out happened to be all of those alterations they did to the character, which was kind of funny, because it was the same thing that people had complained about in the Roland Emmerich remake. I guess the big thing I learned back then was that if it comes from Japan, it's gonna get a pass, no no matter what by some fans, and American versions are always going to have an uphill battle no matter what they do simply because they're not, quote, true Godzilla. You can think of me any way you want to because of that sentence, but it's kind of true, man. This movie changed so much wild stuff about the monster, and while it had people both for and against those decisions like I mentioned earlier, I personally welcomed them in a similar way like I did to the Patrick Totopoulos look. In my mind, we get a lot of different stuff. We got the black and white Godzilla, we get the goofy, comedic Godzilla, we got the dinosaurian nuclear Godzilla from the Heisei series, we get the Jurassic Park-inspired Godzilla of the 90s, all the insane 2000s Godzillas, and much, much more down the line. I don't know, man. I just like to see something new. Now when it comes to this character, I've read a lot about unmade movies, fan opinions, and overall decisions the filmmakers have made that have really divided people all over the world, with the end result usually being some kind of line drawn in the sand for Godzilla debates. As far as I'm concerned, Godzilla is a monster series with a genuinely great first movie, and a whole bunch of ridiculous sequels with small bits of legitimate gold sprinkled throughout. It's not really a franchise that you can mess up, if you know what I mean. Anyways, Shin Godzilla came out to critical applause and happened to win Picture and Director of the Year in Japan when it came out. And if I'm getting those award titles wrong, I apologize, I'm an American, I'm not gonna apologize for that. So, it was a huge success for the brand, but oddly enough, Toho hasn't made a new live-action feature-length film for the monster since then. I'm not so sure why, unless it's because they don't want to compete with Legendary's MonsterVerse, but there is a new Godzilla on the way that's just been announced, and I'm kind of excited to see it. The movie also happens to be the first to feature such an extensive usage of CGI effects outside of the American Godzilla films. The movie did have this awesome looking animatronic made for it, but from my understanding it was eventually covered up with the visual effects. Thematically, 
The film draws new inspiration from the Fukushima nuclear disaster of 2011 and even features the United States' plans to nuke Godzilla, which means nuking Japan as a means of national outrage, but also genuine fear. And they play up on that stuff a lot, much like the 1984 film did, which I personally think this movie is more closely related to than specifically the 1954 original. Oh, and by the way, the method they used to take down Godzilla also reminded me of the ending of Godzilla vs. Destroya, which used a wild cooling system to subdue the monster. Say what you will about the Heisei series, but they knew how to make Godzilla grounded enough as a dinosaur and animal while still showing him to be a giant threat. And this movie did a really good job at making this evolving amphibian monster just cool, dangerous, but also still vulnerable as well. Bottom line, Shin Godzilla is a really solid movie, and while I completely understand why some people dismiss it or even say that it's not, quote, true Godzilla, like, I don't know, Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla or something, I still think that as far as I'm concerned, just my opinion here, guys, this is the second best entry in the entire series. And I'd go as far as saying that after the 1954 original, this one is the clear runner-up when it comes to actual quality films in the franchise. Again, just my opinion. But hey, I've said enough. What do you think about Shin Godzilla? Do you love the movie? Do you hate it? And if so, why? By the way, don't get it twisted. If this isn't the Godzilla you're a fan of, I completely get it, man. Laser Beam, Arbiter Elite Godzilla from Halo, complete with frog transformations, probably wasn't on your list when you thought of what they were gonna do in the new movie. So, look, I get it. But whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be on Shin Godzilla, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.